I'm going to call it Arcadian Well or something. Um, puddle outside. Puddle outside. So now when it comes to the, so the, the lighting's important, and uh, the beauty of this odd light is it, it, it's got a wide screen, at least a large one, for what I'm painting in. I can rest comfortably. You know, I want to be comfortable if I'm going to be doing this for a couple hours. You know, I can look up and yell at my kids and say anything, <laughs> right, or watch TV or something like that. And uh, yeah, so you tinker around like that. Now when it when it comes to painting, what I like to use, and you'll you'll see why, is I, I like my palette is just a sandwich bag. Okay, it has this kind of uh, well, it's a plastic surface, so it's non-absorbent, right? Um, but it's waxy enough because some plastic surfaces still bite. This this doesn't really have any adhesive properties that I can appreciate. Um, not a Ziploc because it, it you want it to be flat. Ziplocs, they have that Ziploc thing and it kind of bends the, the palette up. And then I put uh, oh, just any piece of scrap paper. I forgot to bring some, so I hunted around. I found some old uniform, something, it doesn't matter. It's just a piece of white paper and I slide it in there. And then, so without it, you see it's whatever you're painting over. You know, this is a green tablecloth, so it's difficult to really see the colors and mix and blend. So I just put a white piece of paper under there to give it a true and see what the true colors are. And I, those of you who've walked around, you saw what it looks like. And then I go around and I just so I just I, someone talked about flesh. So I, not that I'm particularly well. I like how I, my flesh comes out. So um, I just grab some apple barrel or this is folk art paint. Um, those who are in the know about the industry will tell you that most of these paints are made by just a few manufacturers, even the good stuff. And it's just the ratio of pigment and uh, carrier and matte that they put in. But I always use these Vallejos and whatnot. Um, and some of the figures are painted exclusively with them, like this drummer. And others are painted with a mix of Vallejo and um, folk art or Apple Barrel, whatever it's at, Michael's. And these are about I think you get them on sale for like anywhere from 50 cents to a buck. The reason I started using more of the uh, Vallejo or um, model color paints was because they are more matte, and I like that effect. So I don't use—I still use the the less expensive paints, but I'll I'll have a little bit of one of the Vallejo paints um, because that that will carry the matte over into the your blend, and you'll still get that matte effect without having to use those paints exclusively. Plus, I tend to spill paint, and I, I have to get up and stop what I'm doing, and I go through these Vallejo bottles pretty quickly if I, if I had to use them exclusively, and finding them, ordering them, again, simplicity. So I usually just come in, you know, flip the light on, grab a sandwich bag, throw a piece of paper in there, squirt out a little paint. And I squirted out this paint a little earlier uh, before the demonstration to help demonstrate something else. So, you see, it's, some of it looks dry already, right? I mean, I don't know if you can tell that, like the yellow, it's not running. The brown, I spilled a, or whatever, more of it squirted out than I had intended. So it's a little moist. The white, this is the Vallejo red. So, you know, if I come back at the yellow, let's say, I'm not picking up any paint. It's already looks dry, right? It's a big deal. So I just flip the back of the, the paintbrush and take the top off. Because right, the surface tension, what it, 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 the surface yes. is dry. Skin. The inside is not. The right. skin, yes, yeah, skin's like that, yeah. like that, right? So then I can keep using it. So I don't need like a wet palette. I don't need. I don't need a lot. I just need this plastic bag, and and I can continue with what I'm doing. So what I'll do is let's say let's say I want to paint the face. So I'm holding it, and that's I always hold the figure to paint the face. I, I, other areas you don't have to, you, know, you can have a little more distance, but to get the face, you have to really bring the face uh, figure closer. So it makes a little yellow, and even if you don't scrape the top off, usually your brush can tear the skin off, and you can pick up a little white, or I mean whatever the color is. Take a little brown. Now here's the Vallejo. See, the Vallejo is dead. <laughs> Vallejo, is, I mean it's pretty dry. So you know, even if I have to, oh, I should have cleaned this up. It's hard. But I, there's not much skin to take off, and if you had a large enough dollop of paint, 
that you're using a lot from your bottle. And that was just five minutes ago. Maybe, no, it's probably been about 10, 15 minutes, I don't know. But all the other paints are still usable. So now I have to go back and take a little more of the red, which is okay. So what's the difference between the three different uh, manufacturers' model color and the craft and the Vallejo? Is there a certain a general difference? I, 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 I don't, I'm no expert, but I think it's... Uh, not pigments. Yeah, they use, uh, they're different pigment providers or distributors, and then whoever mixes it for them, they come up with the, the ratio that they like. Yeah, they, they grind the pigment right Yeah, it's a finer yeah. grind from what I understand. But I don't think, they're not the ones doing it. They, they, they contract out. Sure. It's like makeup or skincare products. Sure. You know, these individual lines are not made by those lines. They're, they're contracted out to some industrial plant sure. that does it. And you don't treat the paints any differently other than the fact that, and that could be due to the flatter nature of the paint that it dries faster. Right. Flatter paints generally do dry um, uh, faster. But you don't treat the paints any differently whether it's craft and or um, different, different tones and shades, right? Let's say I want to add a little more white here. It's looking a little red. Okay, then I pick up a little more. Where's my yellow? Pick up a little more yellow. I like that. A little more white. Okay, so it's looking a little pinkish. And clean up the brush and pick up, uh, pick up a little more brown. You can play around, and you know, it's totally unforgiving. I'm sorry, totally forgiving. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you see how you can just pick it up and play with it? I don't know how other people paint, so maybe it's the same for everyone else, but for me, this is easy. And there's another interesting feature, which even if it's thin enough, even after it dries, if it's a thin enough, let's say I like this color back here, I can sometimes come back to it, moisten it up, okay? Even this has been dry for, what, 10, 15 minutes? So I just add a little water. Yeah, it's a little grainy, you know, because some of it's particulate. It's fully dry. But I've just lifted up all that paint. I mean, you can still use it. <coughs> and I forgot to mention, it's important to have a little paper to help, not a towel. I mean, you need a towel to dry your brush off but sometimes you pick up more paint than you want and paper I find bleeds the br blush brush a little more gently than a t uh, paper towel or a napkin and so you, it, you, your brush will still hold the paint and and you can use it without actually losing it all does that kind of make sense mm -hmm. and this is the same shade and I just dilute it a little more if I wanted to so this dark brown here, or this darker shade, this is all the same color. I've just diluted it a little, and I bled the br brush until I found what I wanted. And when you apply it, the paint that's already there will, will, will draw it out. Okay, so you're not painting over paint. And that's what you're kind of getting at, these, these transitions. So after you do paint an area, these dry pretty quickly which is good because you you want the paint that's there to be able to soak up the next coat of paint as opposed you're not putting another layer on top you're letting it bleed into it a bit and so the more diluted it is the more it'll get drawn out of the brush and you can look at some of my figures under this and, and you'll see that those transitions this isn't going back and forth back and forth back and forth painting another coat trying to get that transition I'm just diluting the this it could be the very same color not even adding any more red or highlight and I'm just diluting it so I'm going from a darker area and just lighter making uh, making it lighter by diluting it and letting the paint below the surface suck it in so that's too abstract let me let me let me show you what I'm talking about so there as you guys were we were talking this is paint that I was mixing about a couple of minutes ago, and it's still fine. I don't know how it is with, and it's not a puddle of paint. You don't have a little tin or a bowl. So, you know, you can use this for a while. So, this looks like a pretty, I just arbitrarily chose these reds, browns, and whites. That's usually what I use for flesh in the beginning. And then, you know, I go under, and I just kind of put a thin, enough so I can still see the features and I just kind of put it over the face okay and there you go and while I'm doing that maybe I'll paint other areas his neck ears 
I'm not, I don't try not to hit other areas, but I'm not worried if I do. I mean, just cover, cover that area. There you go. So it's already <coughs> almost dry. Dry enough to keep painting on it. And you can still see the, uh, if you want to come and look at it, I, don't, I should have had more pre-painted figures for you guys. But you can still see the metal through it. It's mm -hmm. not its not a completely, it's not, by any stretch of the imagination, you can see the metal. You've got some color though. But you got some color, okay? And you can see where some of that paint pools and that acts as your guide. You know, let it tell you what, where the dark should go. So let's say I want to add a little more brown and red. Well, this is still for the, some of the the recesses or the creases. Um, sometimes I, I mean, some people have painted very, they like to paint a very dark surface and then work the highlights up, right? Like if it's a piece of cloth, uh, fabric, they'll paint it very, like, uh, like black primer and then they'll make it lighter and lighter and lighter. Or vice versa, you start out with a very light surface and you paint the recesses darker and darker and darker. It, it doesn't really seem to matter to me. You just start someplace. I like somewhere in the middle and then trying to find the, the depth and the, the highlights. So I just added arbitrarily a little red, a little brown to give it a red-brown color. And then I'll go into the, the recesses under the nose and it, around the cheeks and along the chin scales because he has a shako with chin scales. Just kind of outlining things a little bit and even in the the, uh, the eye sockets come around. Okay, and since it's somewhat di still a little dilute, it, it, it bleeds. So it'll get drawn into the recesses, but it'll also start kind of feathering, if that's the word for it, into the, the, the higher areas. And then I haven't really even waited for it to dry. I just keep going and grab a little more yellow. You know, I'm just going back and forth. So now let's say I want to make some of these highlights a little more apparent. I'm just looking through here and then, so why don't you guys come around and look at this under the, you'll, you'll already see